Benita is joining me today and in my intro. So for actually several weeks since I've been in the hotel, I've been really sick this year, um, not COVID related. And I was able to grab my sewing machine, some of my quilting fabrics, I found my rulers, and I was going through the things that I was frustrated with. And one of the things was, I don't have an extension table. So I looked online on Amazon and on eBay for my machine. It's a brother CS 8072 and they still want like $50 for something that's real old because now it's considered like an antique. And of course everything's going to go up high. Um, I looked on for new machines with the extension tables and I just can't afford to update right now. Uh, especially when we're living in a hotel and it's very expensive. We are spending $1,800 a month for one room to keep two dogs. We have another room. So that's another $1,800 a month for the other three dogs. We're not giving up our dogs. Um, because we have so many animals, we're, we're just not in that criteria to um, be a rental. Uh, definitely not an apartment, but you know, house rentals were just being declined left and right because of that and other issues. So the other thing was, I don't want to spend $50 plus shipping plus tax. I was looking on some other things on Amazon for like $17, but they want to have it and you'll fit around the sewing machine when you take this little table off. I don't like my table off. I like my table. So I'm going to use this part and I come up with a brilliant idea. So what do you have in your kitchen or maybe in your bathroom, your toy room or sitting around in your house that you might have to make your own extension table and no power tools are needed. So let's continue to watch and I'll show you what materials I personally use and then towards at the end of this we will do some brainstorming and how you can do your own extension table that's personalized for your sewing room or your small sewing room like mine which is only a 60 inch area and you know if you're a big seamstress or quilter this can also help you too. Thank you for watching and let's get to it. You will need a cutting board from your kitchen. I got these beautiful little dots at the Dollar Tree, 72 pack for a dollar. And I also decided to use these empty ibuprofen bottles that I have gotten at Dollar Tree. They're a dollar each and perfect. Now here's the dots. You will also need to know the width of the cutting board that you're using to make sure that this is flush. Take off the dots. I kind of scrunched mine up and put them on top of the caps. Now at first I was putting this on the flat side of the cutting board, saw my mistake and turned it over um, because you want to have the groove sides down, but you can have the groove size up and this is a 20 by 15 cutting board and I put these all um, about a half inch in from the from the edges and I put the little dots on the bottom and here I have it all together pushed down it is a fairly nice flush table it's not a hundred percent perfect but hey it was something that I had already had in my kitchen and didn't cost me a thing so it only cost me five dollars to make because I had to buy the dots and the ibuprofen bottles I also have a nice little space underneath I can easily move these bottles uh, the glue does not stick it rolls off and look at all that space I have underneath now to store my notions. So here I am. I went ahead and got the June Taylor. I ha uh, it's a pressing bat and then on the other side is the cutting board. So it has measurements on there and I cut all my fabric on there for this oversized uh, oven pad or heating pad that I am making for the craft share. 
craft fair, sorry. And this fabric, I've actually folded it um, four times, so I was cutting through eight pieces of fabric. So you have to use some pressure to um, you know, put on the cutting board. And as you can see, the cutting board did not bow at, at all. But if you feel like you're putting a lot of pressure on, you need to get a new blade. Polyethylene is really great for your blades because it does not dull them as fast as a maybe a bamboo or a glass cutting board. And zoom, here we go, using my extension table for the first time. So I really like this method. There was no power tools involved. I only um, paid $5 for the extra things that I didn't have. This extension table was really easy to make. And as you can see, everything is laying flat. I'm really loving this new extension table that I made. So excited for things that I already had in my home. So look around. Our, my next section will be brainstorming on what can you use to make your own extension table that you may already have the materials in your home. Get out my first lap quilt and we can piece and go 
quilt it together because it's not quilted. <laughs> okay, so um, what other kind of different things can we use as an extended table? Well, have you considered using a, a canvas panel? It's, they range from 16 by 20s down to like eight and a half by 11s and 11 by 14s, but it, it already has a canvas and it's a panel all together. You would probably put something in the center of it if you use it for a cutting board or a pressing mat. So now I'll show you how to make one of these. This is a pressing mat. It's a Coulter's Cut and Press 2 by June Taylor. This is really old. <laughs> Um, but this is what I was sewing on and, and cutting on because my cutting board doesn't have a ruler yet. I have not put that on yet. Now, if I wanted to keep this as an accessory, I could find um, smaller bottles. And in fact, I got, I got a smaller bottle. This is an ibuprofen PM. And it's just a little bit smaller. So when you um, put this together, you want to keep in mind how wide your cutting board is to your pressing board. And what if you wanted something that's smooth, right? A lot of people are just like, well, and I want, I want to get something that's a silicone or something that's sort of plastic that moves. Because this, is, this moves really nice, but have you considered your rotary cutting mat? Now I've had this for almost 30 years and this is 11 by 17, but guess what? You turn it on the back and then you got that glossy on there. So you can use those little dots. Now this has been in my truck, so I've been trying to press this down. So mine this part right here that's wrinkled. And you would want to use the pressing dots these little um, dots that we used earlier to hold it in place. So you just put it where you want it. You can put it as close as you want to your needle and you can move it around because this is all pretty much, you know, even all the way across. And you just put down some of these little dots where you want it to keep it from slipping. Nice and smooth. I use this and if you have a bigger, area. I have, this is as big as I've gotten for my largest cutting mat that I use. It's basically a 32 or no, it's a 23 by 23, sorry, 23 by 23. And I use the back of it for basting my quilts. I mix the basting a cinch because I can put the needle and I know when I hit the bottom that I can come back up. It's, I'm not going to sew it onto the beds that I have it on. So um, if you are in, you know, I have large pressing mats and stuff, um, you can get a um, larger area to put a whole pressing mat there. And then when you're done and needing to cut, you would just turn it over. So this is kind of nice if you don't have like a big area to set up another table. I'm kind of, I'm thinking of uh, out of the box ways to use everything in one area because I may be moving into like a two bedroom house where I'm only going to have one bedroom and that would be my bedroom. So I'm going to put a day bed in there and my desk and one more table and then try to see what I can do for stacking. So um, yeah, I was hoping to do something different. I may still be able to do that, but that's coming into work. So that may not happen until next spring. So other different kinds of things that you can use for a table is anything that's flat. So if you have a bamboo cutting board, a glass cutting board that you're not using in your kitchen, if you have just regular cardboard, um, you can use that too. Just know that you're not gonna be able to cut on it, but it will still give you that nice area that you can slide your quilt or your sewing project across. I like how um, I do have room to put this as in my other quilting press. This is um, an 11 by 11 size, and I can take this out. I have my templates here. I have my uh, bobbin thread, 
over and you know, a lot of them already pre-done. I have these cute little hexagons that I'm gonna be doing a cool as you go. And I have those projects, you know, and they're all just right here, so I can just slide it under. So I have another little storage area for the things I'm working on. I can put my scissors in there and um, some other different things like that. Now, if you don't have a big cutting board, but you have your squares, you can put these blue dots on here as well and butt this up to your sewing machine. Now, I have a little lip here, so I may put something here, um, maybe some cotton balls, because, I mean, you want to have a little tension in here. Uh, or I can just keep it right here, and that will, you know, keep things from moving. And actually, that gives a nice uh, flat edge. It's not going to be 100% perfect because, you know, it's not made for a machine, but we're using what we have for quilting on a budget. And you can do that with your your 12-inch square. You can use these as an extended table, too. So instead of having a cutting board, you would just put the bottles, you know, on here. And because you're using these little adhesives they're plastic and they rub right off it's not going to leave any residue on there if it does you just put baking soda on it and rub it in or baby powder um and then you can rub you know wipe them right off so you can use these as well now i was also thinking um if i have something on the back side of my sewing machine i can put the cutting board or I can um, make a couple bottles and use this or a smaller this is um I have a six inch wide ruler and I think this one's a five inch the five inch and the six inch I can put that on the back side of my sewing table as well to extend the sewing area and I may do that for my my uh, five inch. Um, so I'll have to collect some more bottles. So these are just other ideas that you can use that you don't have to cut around your machine. You can build around it. You can customize it to how you want it. Now, if you go and get plywood, this is really cool, 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 cool is that um, say you have a desk and my desk is probably like two and a half feet wide so that's what 30 oh let's say a good 30 inch and i can go from a 20 inch down to a 30. so my desk i can get into a 30 by 30. now if i didn't want to use my cutting board i can get that plywood you can get a 10 by 8 between 22 and 35 dollars for a 10 foot by 8 foot plywood and they cut no smaller than 12 inches so you can easily get a 30 by 30 cut real easy and have them cut other different you know sizes so you can extend behind your sewing machine too so know what those are if you um sometimes at these lumber companies uh, Home Depot's and Lowe's, they will have scraps, so you can ask them. I actually have plexiglass cut too. Now, you're not going to be able to use that as a cutting board, but that is another option, and it's really not that expensive. So, for your 30 by 30, which is really cool, is that you can get, um, I have some cotton batting, and this is the warm and natural, 100% cotton. And you want to cut out two pieces that would be the size of that board, 30 by 30. And you want to put it on there and get, um, you would probably want like a 36 by 36 piece of either a muslin, linen, or 100% cotton. Um, you can be sure you pre-wash it because um, that's the problem with the gym tailors with their print stuff is that they got wet and they got disfigured because uh, how I use my sewing machine to press all of my things. I use steam or sometimes water gets you know, on there and then everything shrinks and everything is out of proportion. So we don't we use ruler on the pressing side. So you can make that 30 by 30 into a pressing mat. 
right? A pressing pad. So how simple is that? And then you can do all your pressing here. And how I had my sewing machine before, I just moved my sewing machine out. I have, I conveniently, this little lamp has a outlet and I put my power surge bar here. And I have my little iron. Now I had to buy an iron because I don't know where my irons are. They're in the storage unit. But I would have a 30 by 30 area to do that. However, you know, some of our fabrics are 42 inches long. Instead of, you can make it a 30 by 42 or a 30 by 44. You can have it come off. You want 75% of your board on a stable table top. And you can still have up to eight to 10 inches off that table before it would get really, you know, you can't put any weight on that side because everything over here would jump up. But if you have it, you know, kind of glued down with these little dots and you can have a large area to iron all your fabric right here by your sewing machine. So this is something that is really good and compact that you can do. I will be doing a pressing mat. So I'll probably do um, some other different types of um, legs for these. So what if you don't have prescription drugs, like I'm on right now, um, what other kind of things can you use for legs? Well, like I said, a lot of the lumber companies, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, there's a lot of contractors that live, you know, that work in there. You can just go in and ask, do you have any four by fours or do you have any two by fours? Because at least with the two by fours, you can stack them up. Um, sometimes they're an inch and a half to two inches. So if you have a three and a half inch um, side of your, um, your, I want to say this is the heart part of your sewing machine and it's three and a half and it comes up to about three inches and you make room for maybe another quarter inch or maybe another you know eighth of an inch to get this nice and flat um, you can use those now if you're a mom and you don't you know don't get out look for glasses that are straight not the ones that come out you want to use real glass or really heavy duty plastic, not the thin plastic that you crunch or styrofoam, that would not work. Um, temporarily it could, you just won't put a lot of your own physical weight or cut very good on it, but it would do well for you know the legs for your table. What about Lego blocks? The giant Legos especially would be almost like a perfect size. So you would just need four of those. So if you need the little Legos, you probably would need those double. Put the little glue and connect them that way and stack them as high as you need to. Because those, they have some really thin Legos and then some of the regular blocks. Um, I was kind of thinking too, if um, again, you want to have something that's straight all the way across, like I would take off this lid and use this and I can use that as a leg and um, if you put those little glue dots on and maybe um, put something on both sides so it doesn't roll, um, that would work as well. So um, there's, I mean, just kind of get out of your comfort zone, go around your house and kind of, you know, look to see what do I have. I mean, I even have essential oil bottles. Here, I'll show you. And this is a five millimeter bottle. And look at that. That's you know, probably really good. Like if you put um, a couple of these on and then put your cutting board and then maybe you want to put your pressing mats on here and use that and you want that all level. And maybe you want to put this mat on top and it'd be like the perfect level. So yeah, I mean, whatever you have, baby jars and you want to use the small baby jars, those would be perfect. And you know what, you can look it up and you can you know, store stuff in there too. So just make sure that you put the, um, those little dots back on it. You don't have to do anything that is permanent because I mean, I got a dollar for 72 of these babies. So I can um, t move my legs around, I can 
I, I think I've moved this table a couple of times since the first filming. So in the comments below, is there anything in this video that has helped you? What is it? Have you found anything in your kitchen or in your toy room or in your sewing room that you already have? Write those down. Now, what about, what is the goal for you to do an extension table or to make a pressing table or to combine it? You know, what kind of space do you have? Put that down too. Are you kind of looking like, um, I am that I'm working off, you know, just probably like 60 inches of space? You know, write that down. Or do you have a huge sewing room and this is another great idea to add into what you're doing? Also, if you're doing social media already, you want to have something white so that you can put your smaller projects down. This is a 20 by 15 inch area and I've already taken several pictures of things that I put on social media just by using this table. It's already prepared for me. So as long as I don't mark it, it's ready. All right. Well, thank you for, you know, sticking around and making comments watching this video i hope this has helped because it has really helped me because i was looking on the internet for all kinds of things that was way out of my budget but something that i already had and i actually have two cutting boards so my kitchen is not going to be missing one and i want to say i have another half piece and you know the 13 by 9 i do believe i already have another one of those so um when i get into a, another area i will start with that and then build upon this. And I can also add an extension if I need to, or I can put the 20 inch this way and add more on the other side. And make a pressing table that does cover all of those things because even if there's a little hole missing, at least I'll still have more support on that. And I won't be cutting, I'll just be ironing and pressing. So yeah, I hope that you find this helpful. I encourage everyone to you know, get out of, you know, um, thinking that I had to buy everything because not everything is custom made for sewing machines. Like mine is, um, I want to say my sewing machine is more than 30 years old. I've had it for 25 years and it was refurbished already. So it's, yeah, and it's still going great for me. So um, eventually I want to get into a long arm. <sighs> in my dreams <laughs> but i know i can still use a, a long arm of how i'm going to do my room so that would be a goal for me it's really really way in the distance and i may be like you know i'm already in my 50s so it might be until i'm like 65 years old before i get one of those but anyways it is on my bucket list okay well i'm going to sign off Stay um, tuned um, for, I have two Christmas quilts I'll be making. I have, um, like you saw me in the video, I have um, the, the um, what do they call that? It's like an extra, extra large um, heat pad that you can um, make too. So we're gonna have the voting poll as well. And I highly encourage you to let me know which um, quilting that you liked in it, the small one inch blocks or the two inch. So thank you and we'll see y'all later. Bye bye.